Okay, moving to personal power. Uh, personal power consists of expert power and referent power. So, personal power comes from individual unique characteristics. Um, so, first is expert power. Uh, when we talk about expert power, we talk about uh, the power expertise, uh, the power of having specific or special skill or knowledge. So, expert uh, power uh, uh, arise or we have the expert power uh, because of the expertise that we have, the special skill and knowledge that we have. So as job become more specialized, we become increasingly dependent on expert to achieve goals. So here, as you can see uh, in the class, um, teachers or someone uh, who are you know, fast uh, learners, uh, they be able to understood faster than the rest of the members. They may have the expert power. So, uh, referring power uh, is a referring to the source of, of uh, or, uh, or identifications of a person who have desirable resources or personal traits. So, when we talk about reference and also expert power, we talk about uh, the personal traits that the person uh, have. So, um, uh, uh, for example, if I admire, I identify with you, uh, you, can, uh, you can exercise power over me uh, because I want to please you. This is actually the statements that referring to the reference power. Uh, develop reference power develops of, of admin, admirations of another and desire to be liked by that person. So it's basically lots like a charisma uh, kind of power. So explain this this explain why celebrities are paid billions of dollars to endorse products in commercials. Uh, because uh, their fans like to be uh, like to identify uh, their fan admire uh, the celebrities and their fans want to be identified with their celebrities so that's why celebrities are used uh, to endorse certain products in commercial because they have that kind of reference power where they do not have to do anything just endorse a product and then show on their advertisements and the fan will because they want to be identified with their celebrities or because they admire maybe the identity the the personal behavior or the movie that they act in also this actually can encourage their their fans uh, to 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 buy the product so that's why uh, celebrities have reform powers and then uh, been used by many of the uh, companies to increase uh, their products, their brands of the products. So some people who are not in formal uh, leadership also, there are some people who are not in formal leadership position also have reform power and can exercise influence over others because of their charismatic dynamism and likability and emotional effects on us. Sometimes uh, we follow like others, uh, Twitters or Instagrams or Facebook uh, just because we want to know about them and we like uh, we like their uh, charismatic dynamism, likability, we like to be associated with them. Uh, they have uh, some kind of uh, inter, a kind of uh, uh, attraction for us to follow follow them so if they advertise something or if they encourage something for the people publics to follow normally those who even though they do not have any uh, leadership positions like in the company that you are working they still have uh, power over you through this kind of reference power so I put this slide to conclude all the types of power, the five types of power. For example, cosy power, in order to, to differentiate cosy power with the rest of the power, you just think of the bully. Because they want something from you, they force you, they treat you with a pain, with a negative thing that you didn't like, so that's why you comply with them. Reward power is like your boss give you money, give you promotions. If you didn't comply with their request, you will not get promotions, you will 
not get money. So that's a reward power. Legitimate power is like uh, the position that uh, the person uh, carries, for example, policemen, uh, doctors, uh, uh, teachers, uh, and so on. Expert powers, uh, expert powers, those who have expert powers such as doctor, you go to, to, to see the doctors because you won't get their, their advice regarding the diseases or the illnesses that they can uh uh, help you. For example, at this point, there are COVID nine. There, there is uh, many cases regarding COVID nineteen. If you tend to have symptoms, uh, uh, may you need to go to see the experts. I mean, the, the doctors. Uh, if you have the symptoms. Uh, if you didn't have the symptoms, uh, it, that's another case. But if you have the symptom, you need to go to the to see the the expert. Uh, or the doctors. You, if you see, uh, to if you go to get advice from the the non expert one you may get you may get uh you know wrong information so it is important to go to the expert so that they can give you the correct uh the, the information that's uh, considered accurate and then um you know um useful for, for you so, uh reference power you can think of the celebrity they didn't have any uh position in the company they do not have the expert power they do not have the the legitimate power they cannot reward you but you still uh, follow them you still uh, you know uh, like to be associated with them you like to be identified with them because they uh, have their reference power that's me they have power over you influence over you uh, because of you like to be you you, you like to be uh, you know to be associated with them you like you want to be like them that's a uh, uh, reference power uh, in this case. So this actually uh, easy for you to understand the, the types of power if you could differentiate between any of these power. So which uh, basis of power are more effective? Um, uh, for personal uh, personal sources or personal power are more effective but what's uh, uh, the personal power personal power is a reference and also uh, the other one is um, uh, expert power expert and reference power are more effective because both expert and reference power are positively related so experts and reference power could uh, increase employee satisfaction with the supervisions, uh, could increase organizational commitment, could uh, increase job performance. So in the organizations, uh, important for the manager to apply expert and reference powers because they actually relate to the performance of the employee satisfactions and organizational commitments. Whereas rewards and legitimate power seem to be unrelated to this outcome. Uh, and coercive power can be damaging because you do not like to be forced by someone. You, you consider someone who forcing you to follow them like a bully. So you do not like to, to follow uh to follow the orders even though you follow you still have that kind of rebellious in you so coercive power can be damaging so another thing explain the role of dependence in power relations uh, ship so the general dependency postulates that uh, the greater b dependence on a the greater the power a has over b so when you possess anything that other require but that you alone control you make them dependent upon you more therefore you gain more power over them so basically uh, i use this slide to explain uh, the dependence uh, general dependence uh, uh, theory or themes how the greater b depend on a the greater a uh, has power over B. So I put this as a, a you know symbol of power. The more B depend on A, the more things that B desired A controls, the more A power or uh, have power uh, over B. So uh, so you gain power over, over B. That's why uh, many organizations uh instead of uh, depend on one suppliers on uh, one supplier they try to get more suppliers uh, to send them the products so many organization do not have just one supplier they have many suppliers so that they do not rely on one supplier if they rely on one supplier this supplier have 
power over the organization they this supplier the main supplier that the organization re, uh, re, rely on to get the products or to get the stock can increase the price if the supplier thinks that the organization rely on them more or if the suppliers think that uh, they have power over the organization to decide what price to do whether to increase or not the price so that's why many organization uh, develop multiple suppliers so that they don't just rely on one uh, this is also explain why so many of us inspire to have financial independence so that we do not depend on one type for example if you depend on the investments if you depend on investment investment depend on the economy if the economy going down your investment may be going down so you do not have any financial in, uh, uh, dependence on the investment anymore so it is important to have many different types of financial uh, investments not just on one type of investment so th that's basically is uh, explain the general dependence so gender dependency postulate that the greater B uh, depends on A, the greater the power of A has over B. So in order to make sure people do not uh, have power over you, try to be not depends on them, uh, but try to even though you depends on them, try to be uh, to find other alternative uh, to say that you are just not dependent on them alone. Instead, you have many dependents, many multiple uh, dependents. So they will think that they don't have power over you so uh, explain the role of dependence uh, in power relationship uh, what create dependence uh, dep you depend on others because of three things the importance of the things that they have the scarcity of the things that they have the non-substitutability the things that they have if you could uh, overcome this then you you will uh, not depend on them so we start one by one so for the first uh, uh, for the first factor importance so to create dependence the thing you control must be perceived as important in order to ensure that people depend on you so you have to ensure that you control the thing that they consider important so the how to consider things that are important uh, based on many degrees of importance such as they need the things uh, that you control for their survival so let's say the things that they need uh, consider resources that are important for their survival then uh, you con they consider you uh, as a uh, have power over them so also when uh, it's not only the things that they that are important for survival but also uh, other resources or things that are important for convenience life uh, it's like uh, the first one is important for the survival this one for convenience life that's mean uh, in addition to the survival another thing is uh, a resource also need to be perceived as cause to create dependence so let's say you have the the, the resources that are, are difficult to get from other uh, places so you are the only place that they can get this resource resource so that's the resource that you have is considered scarce or difficult to get somewhere somewhere else so another thing is non-substitutability that means the, the resources that you control or the things that you are controlled do not have do not cannot be replaceable cannot be uh, found in other uh, with uh, on uh, in anywhere else so non-substitutability means the fewer viable substitutes for the resources so uh, that's why organizations uh, in order to become more important to the customer they try to to make sure that the customer perceive that their company have the important product or the services that the customer needs and also the product that the company uh, produce are scared and uh, cannot be uh, find in any other company or the products that they produce are uh, actually uh, non-substitutable cannot be replaceable uh, uh, with other products from other company so if the company could provide uh, these three things uh, to the customer customer will uh, think that uh, we perceive that the company uh, is actually uh, have control over them because they uh, they the company have uh, 
control the basic necessity that the the the, the customer needs. So that's one of the reason uh, how a company um, practice uh, commitment, uh, customer commitment or loyalty to buy their products. Okay, this actually I put in this slide so that's uh, to ensure that uh, the importance of uh, the three important things, scarcity, importance and non-substitutability.